My name is Norman Fenton, and what I'm going to describe today is a Bayesian network model that's been developed by our group for monitoring and tracking COVID-19. If you haven't seen a Bayesian network model before, then here is actually a very simplified version of the full model that we have for this COVID-19 symptom tracking. But it gives you the rough idea about what's in the model and what a Bayesian network is. So what you can see is that it's a graphical model. It's got nodes which represent uncertain variables, which may or may not be observed. So when we'd be able to observe the age of a person, but wouldn't be able to directly observe their COVID-19 status. That's something we want to learn as we observe information about a person. And there are directed links between certain nodes, like infected with COVID-19 and the status. There's a direct causal or statistical relationship. So obviously, if you have been infected with it, you will have a status, severe, mild, or asymptomatic. If you haven't been infected with it, then you'll have none. Now, there are symptoms down here, which you will observe or not observe, depending on your COVID-19 status. So the direction of the causal link makes sense here. Whether or not you see the symptoms depends on your COVID-19 status and your status will be determined by whether or not you have it and various risk factors and your age. Similarly, whether or not you test positive will depend on obviously whether you have the disease or not and whether or not you actually get tested or the type of test it is. So also associated with every node you see is a node probability table. So for example here, node probability table for symptom cough if you've got severe COVID-19, then there's a 71% chance that you'll have a cough. But if you don't have it, there's still a 20% chance you have a cough because lots of people have coughs all the time. This data comes from either empirical data where it's available, and if it's not, then we have to rely on expert judgment. And similarly, something like the test result here comes from data on test accuracy. So different types of test accuracy for these things. Now, as we observe information about a person, we can enter it into the model and run the model, and it revises the probabilities of the unobserved variables. So if, for example, we observe someone who has a cough and loss of taste or smell, it's considered to be quite an important indicator of COVID-19, we run the model, and of course, it's going to update it our belief about the status. It's, it's still more likely than not the person is infected with COVID-19 because of these. I mean, you could run then run a test. For example, if you ran, let's say, a PC na nasal test, we run that and we test positive. It's because of the potential inaccuracy of this test, it's still not certain, then we're more likely to have the condition. You know, this, this actually represents your eventual COVID-19 status. You clearly can't be asymptomatic now because you've actually got the symptoms. Your eventual status will be determined how bad you get it. That's where the age and the risk factors come in. So if this person, let's say, is over 80 with multiple comorbidities, then the eventual COVID-19 severe status obviously significantly increases. Incidentally, even with this data, if, for example, you had a CT scan and the result was negative, then despite all of this other information you've got here, the result is that you've almost certainly not got COVID-19. And I'm actually going to show you now the full model. So this is the full model. You can see it's got various components, the background risk factors over here, infection possibility here. This is influenced by things like whether you've had contact with a confirmed COVID-19 person. Chances are you won't know that, but you'll know if you've had contact with somebody who's symptomatic, which may or may not indicate that they were indeed confirmed COVID-19. Or you could have some immunity due to having previously had it. And of course, that immunity depends on the time since you've had it, because the longer ago it was, then the less that immunity is believed to be there. Similarly, we've got the test over here, we've got the symptoms over here, but we make a distinction between the current and eventual status. And of course, that depends on time since you may or may not have first been infected by it. And we also note that because these symptoms are also common in certain other similar conditions like uh, flu, COPD, then any information you have about symptoms is telling you not just about possibly about COVID, but also about whether you've got some other condition with COVID-like symptoms. So let's take a typical scenario. Let's say we've got a 60-year-old person who's not a frontline healthcare worker, but let's say yesterday went out, had multiple interactions, went, let's say, to a party, and we've just found out that one of the people was now has COVID symptoms. 
let's suppose that, that we haven't had previous symptoms. So we haven't previously had this. We haven't had a test before. What is this going to tell us about the risk of COVID? Well, when we run the model, what it's telling us is that it's unlikely that we're infected, but the probability has gone up, saying very low before, it's gone up to uh, nearly 34%. Now, because we're at the moment, we've only just had it, so we're in the less than a week to five days scenario. So, of course, we're not reporting any symptoms at the moment. So, should we self isolate? Depends where you want to set the threshold here for self isolation. Because of that 34% probability of having it, you may choose to self-isolate. You might, however, go, want to go and get a test. So let's suppose that we just get the nasal test and we test positive. Then at this point, the probability that we have it has gone up to 73%. But because it's less than five days and we haven't reported any symptoms, it's almost certain that we're asymptomatic at this point. However, that doesn't mean that we're going to end up asymptomatic because how we eventually end up here is where there's a 7% chance that we might actually have uh, COVID-19 severe. Now, of course, that severity will depend on the risk factors. So, for example, if I am aged, let's say, over 80... Uh, and let's say have significant underlying medical conditions, then when we run the model again, we can see that although we're asymptomatic now, there's actually a 44% chance that we're going to have it severe. So we've certainly got a COVID alert here. We might also consider that hospital alert to, to go off at, at 22%. Let's say after five days, you let's say observe these symptoms then you can see that that's increasing the probability that there will be a severe case here.